keep going? Yeah, you're far away. Okay. Um, this morning I re- I'm on the uh, Source of Fall email list. Um, I know most people go, eh, it's all disinformation, right? But every now and then I do get a good email. <clears throat> this one was in... Uh, had outlined the reasons why so many people, apparently intelligent people, are brain dead, right? I mean, they can't think outside of their box. So she went through the the, the dual mind system, and I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, I just read all about this in cognitive law, right? So I keep reading, and then she identifies this certain chemical, DMT, that's inside the brain that lets people think more freely, right? Right. Well, she said that the elite have placed sodium fluoride in all of the major water systems, and that sodium fluoride kills the DMT effect. Okay. Right. So then she went on to say, well, you know, there are certain drugs that you can take, but you can't get a hold of them anymore that would reactivate the DMT. Now, what was really interesting, people can go to sourceoffall.com and they can find the article. There was a crop circle. I don't know where it was taken. It didn't say when. Now, get this. There's a picture of an alien, right? Two big eyes. Yeah. And a big pipe coming out of its mouth with smoke coming out of it. And then around the head were a whole bunch of of uh, small globes, small orbs, okay? Yep. Indicating that if you smoke this stuff, your mind's going to expand, right? This is from the aliens, for Christ's sake. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I just just quickly on it, um, two things. There is a vibrational change affecting the planet and affecting every conscious living being on this planet right now. It cannot be stopped. It cannot be interrupted by any kind of pathetic harp or any other type things. It cannot be poisoned. It is occurring at a cellular level despite the toxins, despite the poisoning, and despite the disinfo. And it is why the elite are freaking out. Right. Because for all their efforts, this vibrational change is waking people up that shouldn't otherwise be woken up. And I call this the, I, I call this almost the wino effect. Okay. And the way I explain it is: Have you ever? Has anyone ever gone past someone, a very sad, tragic, alcohol addicted person that may be in their later years, and you go past them? And for an instant at that moment when almost no one else is around, they may speak something of such profanity that it couldn't possibly have been a conscious thought. Yeah? Yep. Okay. In other words, um, whether we have been taught it or not, the awareness is waking up inside of us despite what they have done to us. Now, this goes against every claim of being gods in their system because if they were gods this wouldn't happen if they were in control this wouldn't happen and it's happening Ron yep my only concern is that we get distracted I I keep saying it and I I know that you're trying your best and I know everyone's trying their best but I, I I just hope people are not distracted by the constant chatter that the elite can stop this can do this can do that it's over you know, the change is happening, and, the, and what it's showing is that these people can kill us, poison us, murder us. They can change everything in the world. It will have no effect. They are part of it. It's over. And come December and onwards, they'll be choking on their chops. They'll be dying in their sleep. They'll be slipping on the marble. They'll be zapped by their lights. And every time they are awake, every day, whether it be on the golf course or in the boardroom, wherever it is, their days are numbered. And that is someone else's department. It's not mine. Well, I just just brought this up to 
to illustrate how desperate they are to keep total control. Sure. I know they're desperate. Oh, yeah. I know they're desperate. But, but it's gone beyond that. It's gone well, well beyond that now. Yep. And it's now in the realms of a force that they have no control over. And I keep saying it. It's spiritual first. And it's, and it's, and it's a, a, a astronomical now. Yep. So yep. it's well beyond their control. All right? All right. Good on you. Bye. Bye. All right. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Frank. Let me um, get here to a couple more on the phone. Can you hear me okay? Yep. All right. Ben, are you there? Hi. Uh, it's Ben again. I just wanted to relay something that went on when I was talking a bit ago about the chief judge. There was an arrest in this area, and the individual who was arrested was pretty well schooled in I do not consent. And from the moment that the sheriff came to her house and she encountered him, she said, I do not consent. I do not consent. I do not consent. As they were, every time they touched her arm, she would say, I do not consent. They would hold her arm and walk her a few steps and then drop their hand. And she would stop. And she, then they would put their, seeing that she wasn't moving voluntarily, they would again put their hand on her arm and she would say, I do not consent. They would walk her away further. When she got to the truck, she said, I do not consent. And they put the, um, they had to put their hand on her arm again. And she just looked at the woman deputy and she said, well, are you going to kick me like you did last time? Not that specific deputy, but the woman knew what she was talking about. And she said, well, no, uh, we're not. So they took her in and she said, I do not consent to fingerprints. I do not consent, you know, everything. They said, we get it, we get it. You don't consent. They finally went and got the chief administrator and she said, I do not consent to fingerprints. He said, look, we got to get your fingerprints. She said, well, um, these are copyrighted fingerprints. If you want to use them, then you are consenting to an invoice. He said, I don't care. We'll consent to it. We just need to get your fingerprints. <laughs> okay, fine. So the whole thing went on, but every step of the way, I do not consent. And one of the things that she had the realization of from someone else was when you get to the door of the jail, they drop their hand and you walk through voluntarily. Yes, and they yes, had yes, yes. they had to put her their hand on oh. her to walk her through as she was saying, I do not consent. So the consent thing is very important and, and what's so important about it is also very simple. You know, if you can just stay on point, and even though they, we know, we know, we get it, you, you don't consent, blah, 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 you know. And the guy, the administrator, told her, he said, look, he said, I, I don't know, are you one of these conspiracy theorists or something, constitutionalist? He says, look, I'm a Mason, and we're part of the Illuminati, and we're all around us. Well, I, Paula and I laughed when we heard that. They're not going to admit something like that if they are. And I'm not sure that he would be quite as elevated stature to be one. Sure. <laughs> but I, I thought it, it was funny that he said that. It's a really good feedback. And, and Lynn, I think the, the thing that, that I hope can be added to people with that uh, is not just simply saying, uh, I do not consent to a trustee uh, touching the executor. You are a public trustee. You have no right. I do not consent. So it's taking it a little bit further than simply do not consent. You're not consenting to a trustee breaching trust law, which is sacred law, uh, in touching the executor. I do not consent. I am the general executor. You have no right. Are you a public trustee? Yes, I am. And keep nailing it. You're a public trustee knowingly and willingly breaking trust law. I do not consent. I'm not part of this. I do not consent. 
and that will add even more to it. You see, the do not consent, it's it, one of the presumptions, and we know that they know trust law. We know this. We know that they know they're a public trustee, but what's happening with the cons do not consent on its own, when people merely use it on its own, is it's not tackling the primary presumption that uh, they are still viewing you as a rebellious child, as a uh, recalcitrant poor person, as a rebellious slave. And, and if we don't tackle that presumption, then they're going, oh, well, we'll just have to drag you along then. Yeah? It's, it, they're still getting away because of those other presumptions. So then I hope as we go forward, people will, will review the 12 presumptions and we'll see that the do not consent needs to be coupled with the knowledge that are you a public trustee? Are you a public servant? Yes, you are. Well, then I do not give consent as executor to you touching me at all and see what happens then, okay? Great, thank you. Thanks, Lynn. Uh-huh. All right, thank you, Lynn. Thank you for that feedback, Frank. That, that was a really good, uh, interesting uh, story there. Um, now, still on the phones, we got lots of phone uh, folks here, Frank, so let me get to them yep. here. Micros 40. Micros 40, are you there? Micros 40? Hello? Micros 40? Well, we have lots of folks. Micros 40, if you have your own phone muted, um, just unmute, put yourself back in the queue by pressing star 8. Uh, apologize if we have missed your question here, but we'll get you back in the queue. Thanks. All right, next is uh, Ron. All right, Ron. Hi, Frank. Hi, Ron. Hey, um, I decided to rewrite the, um, the notice of uh, mistaken identity. Yep. I narrowed it down by three pages. I took three pages out, and it became very, uh, very pointed and to the point, but... The key was I used all of the new um, technology that you've written into the positive law. Good. So um, I think that's going to be a lot better for everybody. And I, as I was writing this thing, I was thinking, you know, the key, the key to this thing is, number one, being the general executor and general guardian, like you've pointed out. And then number two is the consent there, everything, everything in their entire system is based upon voluntary consent. Okay, would you no, agree with presumption? That? Yeah, with yeah, presumption. Yeah, it's an assumption, right? Yeah. So, and like you say, if you if you sign any documents or do anything that's under duress, you did it by necessity, which is null and void. You just have right. to make that clear. Correct. Yes. Yep. Unless unless the presumption stands that you are a slave in which case they just pull rank, yeah? Okay, and then how do you break the slave presumption? Well, by being general executor and general guardian. Oh, there you go. I already did that. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it's it's a circular argument. So once yes. once you nip it in the bud with what you're doing, then the, the, the circular argument ends. They, they have nowhere to go, yeah? Yep, yep, that's true. So if well, you want then, to see it, I'll send it to you. Yeah, and please, and if it can be posted up on U of U... Oh, it will be. Great. be. Oh, it will uh, be. Excellent. Thanks again, finished. Ron, for everything you're doing. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Ron. All right. Now we've got Northeast Texas. All right. Can you hear us? Northeast Texas. Good evening. Hi. Hello. So uh, if I heard correctly earlier in the conversation, something about uh, vital statistics and uh, census, um, I don't think I made that connection, but, but keep going. Well, I had a comment on that, and that Please. is that in the Bible, King David uh, ordered his officers to number Israel. They objected because they knew it was against God's law. Yeah. So King David overruled their objections and 